there's more dissatisfaction with political parties, but also you see a positive turn of more young people towards politics in general, um, political decision making, and also like. Uh, movements like you saw that now with the election win for example in thailand you you yourself said that it's a lot of young people who basically stood up against the foreign agents law in georgia um what makes it so specific also for the elections next year uh, which role does young people or do young people in georgia have to play in the in the future of the country uh well again a lot will depend on uh, the decision that will be made uh, in december uh, this will um I assume, empower all the pro-Western movements uh, in Georgia. Um, but when it comes to elections, um, it is still remaining a challenge uh, because uh, the uh, Georgian political or electoral landscape is uh, being very compromised. And uh, as you know, elections are not conducted on the election day and election results are not decided on the election day, but elections mm, um, or election outcomes are often predecided uh, by those uh, who conduct the elections. And uh, this is a longer process, way longer than just, you know, a month of observation prior to the actual election day. Mm, and the ruling party that is being now for the second or the four third term uh, with the... Uh, majority, uh, it managed to consolidate its political and administrative and financial power um, in as much as it still can affect the election results and outcomes in their favor without having sufficient popular support. And this is certainly a dilemma for the, for the Georgian society, for the political society. It is also a dilemma for, the, uh, for our European partners, uh, because at the end of the day, when the candidate status is granted, and hopefully it is granted, they will have to work with the actual representatives of the country. And if uh, and the dilemma is created by the fact that those are the people who are led and controlled by one person, that is the Russian oligarch. The system of ruling in Georgia is an oligarchic one. It is not a democracy. It is, it is a you know, one-person rule. While democratic Europe will have to deal with the fact that they will be working and also financially aiding uh, the government that is uh, not particularly democratic and that is not particularly pro-European. And um, this is still, this is, um, I think this is something um, European politicians will have to find out a way how to cope with the situation. In my understanding, Mm, the best case would be uh, to understand uh, that the status needs to be granted to the country uh, to keep Georgia close to Europe, uh, to be granted to the people who deserve it, uh, not to lose Georgia in the region because Georgia remains pretty much the only ally uh, for the European Union since um, you know, there, are, uh, there are new alliances coming up, such as uh, Aliyev Erdogan alliance. Uh, Armenia will, uh, it's a matter of time when it will turn away from Russia because uh, uh, considering the recent events, uh, uh, Armenia no longer relies on Russia as being a reliable partner. Um, so at the end of the day, they will try to find some new ways. And uh, Georgia remains the pretty much the only country in the Caucasus region uh, that can be considered as a strong partner for Europe and for the European, uh, for the European countries. Um, at the same time, um, at the same time, there, w there will... 
some measures uh, have to be taken against the governing party that has been behaving badly, very undemocratically, and are basically trying to impose an you know an autocratic way of management. Um, that is being imposed on the Georgian population already for the last 11 years. Uh, but, uh, but um, you know, just give them a sign that uh, it cannot continue even if they stay in power. And uh, this is uh, most effectively, I'm sure, done uh, by certain types of sanctions or at least a threat of sanctions, you know, not to divert from the actual path the Georgian people want. It's that's super interesting, and especially like what you also mentioned in terms of the regional and internal politics. Um, you spoke about the Erdogan Aliyev alliance. We have to see what happens with the Turkish election in the second round, which we saw already on on, on Sunday that it's going to be like um, um, like different. Um, and then we also like um, spoke earlier about. Uh, what role basically Ukraine has for uh, the Georgian fight uh, for EU uh, membership? So, for example, um, that EU uh, that that Ukraine pushed and pushed and pushed to basically also get the means to defeat Russia on the on the battlefield. So, what does that also mean for Georgia? You you uh, you basically um, mentioned already some points, but basically, what could that mean also for Georgia and especially for for December? Is that a positive sign? Um, Ukraine is um, fighting our war. Ukraine is fighting for our freedom. Um, everything uh, that is happening in Ukraine now um, has uh, the same underlying reasons um, why Russia has invaded uh, Georgia in 2008. Um, Russia has invaded both countries to push Europe out of the region, to push NATO out of the region. That's the only purpose they have. And, uh, and um, the, it's, it's the same battlefield. It's just today doing by the, done by the, by the Ukrainians. Uh, but it is rightfully understood by the broader population in Georgia that it, that it is pretty much our war. And also many Georgians are fighting, in fact, in Ukraine because it is for their freedom, for, for the freedom of their children and for the peaceful development of the region. So we are very much in the same boat there. And uh, we can only be thankful to Ukrainians that they could now achieve what we could not in 2008 because we were too small, because uh, Russia back then was understood to be uh, way stronger, because, you know, because of many geopolitical um, understandings and also misconceptions uh, towards Russia. And Ukraine did an amazing job to convince the entire world that it's worth fighting against a tyrant and that Putin is a tyrant and Putin is a, you know, leading a, a terrorist regime mm, uh, that is never going to obey internationally accepted rules. Um, and uh, this is a game changer. This is a game changer for the Western countries and it is a game changer uh, for the regional countries uh, and for Georgia in particular because otherwise... Uh, there. Otherwise, we wouldn't have even that perspective of uh, you know of getting the the uh, European uh, membership status uh, now, and uh, this has opened up uh, huge possibilities uh, for Georgia if there was now you know a national pro-European government in place. Then we probably already would have gotten the candidate status because Georgia was uh, once front runner um, when it when it came to you when it came to euro integration um, the association trio was uh, 
in fact uh, put in place because of Georgia uh, back then uh, and uh, and uh, we were way forward when it came you know when it came to uh, to successful reforms when it came to you know putting democratic institutions into place um, but because of you know because of the I would say wrong government um, being now uh, at a wrong timing um, at power um, it uh, it creates certain challenges uh, while you know Ukraine and Moldova uh, could have been more successful uh, or, or were more successful and Georgia could have been as successful as well. Um, but it failed to do so. But I'm still very hopeful um, towards uh, the decision that is to be made in December um, because I have the feeling that the West understands well the political context and it also is um, pretty much tied of uh, the, uh, you know, of the signs the Georgian people are sending uh, to the European capitals, and we also see a huge change not just within the um, political elites of uh, the Western countries, but also on the popular side. That there, there is, since Ukraine, there is a um, you know huge turn uh, when it comes to assessing uh, current Russia properly, but also to assessing how important the region may be uh, for the European security.